his goodness and his mercy out there. Happy May to every single person out there. We want to give God thanks and praise to you. If you're excited that you're still in the land of the living, you ought to open up your mouth this morning and just give God praise. Hey, you made it over the peak. You made it through the month of May. You made it through the first phase of that coronavirus. You'll be ID 90, you made it and you have so much to give God thanks for. This is Bethel Tabernacle AME Church, 90 Schenectady Avenue, the corner of Schenectady and Dean. And we're here for no other purpose but to give God praise and thanks this morning. I want to first thank you for joining me this morning and with your family. I'm asking you to start your watch party. I'm asking you to share this, share this service and I'm asking you to repost it right afterwards. So you've got three responsibilities this morning. First of all, you've got to worship. Second of all, you've got to get each and every single one of your families together. And third of all, you've got to share it. You've got to share it. But I want somebody out there to know that this is the day that the Lord has made. And we will rejoice and be glad in it. Is there anybody out there who just is so happy this morning? But God thought about you. God gave woke you up this morning. God thought of you. God thought of you in such a wonderful and considerable way that when you woke up, when he, when he looked at you as you were laying down on your bed, as you were right there fast asleep, as you were right there, as some people would say, they were in a coma sleeping. I just want you right now to open up your mouth and just give God praise and give God thanks and say, Lord, I thank you. Where are my people this morning who would give God praise and thanks this morning? Where are my children? children this morning who would say, Lord, you did it for me one more time. Where are my elderly this morning who would just give God thanks that he brought you through the month of January, but he brought you through the month of February, but he brought you through the month of March, that more than ever, he brought you through the month of April, right there. Can we just put a little pause right there? But you said, Lord, thank you, especially for bringing me through the month of April. Thank you for covering my family. Thank you, Lord, for keeping me in my right mind. That's right. Is there somebody out there who would just lift up the name of Jesus this morning? That's what we're here to do this morning. We will exalt the name of Jesus. We will will magnify the Lord. Is there somebody out there who will help me magnify the name of the Lord for this next hour, this first Sunday of May, this communion Sunday, as we bless the Lord, as we give him praise, as we give him thanksgiving. The 150th Psalm says, let everything that had breath, huh? praise. Oh, come on. You can do it with me this morning. I want you to text somebody. Call somebody. Let them know that it is time to worship. Let them know if they live in your house, huh? you want to know that you as a parent, that you as the adult, that you as a grandmother, you have a responsibility to let everybody, 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 somebody out there say, everybody have a responsibility to praise the name of the Lord this morning. Oh, come on, worship him. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise will do what? Continually be in my mouth. My soul will make his boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. I just need somebody out there to worship with us this next hour. I need you to get your Bibles. I need you to get out with my dancers out there. You, we will praise his name this morning. You will magnify the Lord. You will lift up the name of Jesus and whatever moves you can do, you got to worship him. Lift him up for the rest of this month. In the next 31 days, I promise you, it will be a very different picture from what the we came through the wilderness of April. I need somebody out there to know and to sit, notify somebody. We are here to pray. Somebody said praise. Praise the name of the Lord. We are going to go into prayer. But we want you to know, we want you to know that we're here to magnify the Lord. We're here. We, we're here to make sure that you get through this next season of your life. Oh, there's somebody out there. I want you to get your wife, get your husband, get your children. Just lift up the name of the Lord. Oh, come on. Lift up your name. Lift up the name of Jesus. Magnify his name. Give him thanks. Oh, can we just for the next 30 seconds just magnify his name? 
name. Oh, come on, somebody magnify his name. Give God thanks and praise. Give God the praise that is due unto his name. Give God the praise because he did it for you all through the last five months. Would you magnify his name? I know some people out there that's about to celebrate their birthdays this month. You have a reason. Somebody out there, hashtag the word. Reason to worship. Reason to give him thanks. Reason for your healing. Reason for your protection. Hashtag it. Hashtag it. Oh, come on. Talk back to us this morning. Give him praise. Worship his holy name. Give him thanks this morning. Will there, somebody, will there be somebody who can join with us this morning as we bless the Lord, as we say, God, you are worthy. God, you are magnificent. God, you are wonderful. God, you're all that. Is there somebody out there who can say, Lord, I thank you for just making me who you made me in the loveliness of who you created me to be. I'm just putting breath in my body. I'm just putting life inside of me. Is there somebody out there who could just lean back and just say, thank you, Lord, for your goodness and mercy. We're going to pray right now. And I need you to get your family members together. I need you to get everybody together. This is critical. This is critical. This is critical because, because here's why. Prayer changes things. Prayer changes things. And you've got to believe it this morning. I want somebody to hashtag the word in the comment section right now. I believe God. I believe God. Hashtag I believe God. You got to do it right now. Right now. Right now. I believe God as we go into prayer. As brother Gerard brings us into the wonderful inner presence of God. Oh come on. Get your families. Would you hold hands with every family member in your house and just hold their hands and just realize how wonderful, realize you've got to cherish them, realize that God brought you together. And let you, I want to let you know, for every single person out there who's grieving, for every single person who's dealing with a sick family member, we're praying for you, and we will pray for you. For every uh, frontline workers, we're praying for you. For every first responder, we're praying for you. For every police officer, we're praying for you. We got you. We will pray for you this morning. I heard your comments, and we'll be praying for you. God bless you. Come on, brother Joe. Your breath amazing, amazing love. Praise the name of the Lord, everybody. Praise the name Praise of the Lord, everybody. Here we are, one more time, one more time. In the spirit of thanks, Lord. We're in the spirit of thanks, Lord. In the spirit of thanks, Lord. For everything you've done for us this week. For everything you've done for us since this global pandemic has started. We just thank you, Lord. We pray for those who've lost. We pray for those who are going through it right now. We pray for those who are being good, vigilant to give us the services that we need, Lord. We thank you, thank you, thank you for giving them the strength that they need to take care of your people, Lord. We thank you for everything you've done for us, Lord. But mostly we thank you for allowing us to be in the service just one more time, Lord. Because here we are in the midst of everything, doing everything that we can to bring your words to your people, Lord. And we thank you for that. We thank you for the ability to do it. We thank you for the opportunity to do it. We thank you for the ability to serve you, Lord, in the ways that you have blessed us with talent and the ability to do these things. We thank you for the resources to do it. We thank you for the for our pastor. We thank you for allowing him to bring his word to your people, Lord in a new and different way, but we are getting it done. We are getting it done. I want to thank you, Lord, for those who have healed. Yes. I want to thank you, Lord, for those who have come home. I want to thank you, Lord, for everything that you've done to slow this thing down so that we can get back to the business of serving you, Lord. So that we can, again, begin to think about getting back together with, you, with each other and serving you in the way that you intended, Lord. I want to thank you. I want to thank, thank you. you. I want to thank you. I want to thank you for this communion Sunday. I want to thank you for everything you've done for us, for everything you've sacrificed for us. I want to thank you. And that's how we're coming to you today with a spirit of thanksgiving. Yes, sir. With a spirit of thanksgiving. Yes, sir. With a spirit of thanksgiving. Lord. Yes, Lord. Worship him. I just want to take a moment, Lord, and thank you. Worship. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For everything you've done. Thank you. It is in the sweet and precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray. Have a Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody's
Hallelujah. Oh, come on. At home, you could put your hands together for Brother Tony as he had blessed us this morning. Our God is an awesome God. Amen. Oh, you can shout amen. You can shout amen right there in the comment section. Our God is awesome. I just want you just to take the next 10 seconds and just write something in the comment section of how God has been awesome towards you. He has provided for you. He has kept you healthy. He has been your refuge and strength. He has been your present help in the time of trouble. He woke you up this morning. He has covered your household. When you were going out, he protected you. When you were coming in, he protected you. When you were going to the hospital, he protected you. When you were coming back, he protected you. Is there anybody out there that can just send, just lift up his name this morning and just shout from your living room, shout from a hospital bed, shout in the living room, shout in your bedroom, shout from the kitchen, wherever you are, you can just say, God, thank you, because you have been an awesome God. You have been an awesome God. Oh, come on, let's just worship him for the next 30 seconds. Let's say, Lord, you have been awesome. Lord, you've been great. Lord, you've been magnificent. Lord, thank you for my wife. Lord, thank you for my children. Lord, thank you for my job. Lord, thank you for my business. Lord, thank you for my employer. Lord, thank you for the friends in my life. Lord, thank you for those who brought me home. Lord, thank you for those who have been praying for me. Oh, come on, you got to open up your mouth. I, I'm talking to somebody who's just looking, who's looking, who's looking for a change this month. Who's just looking, looking, looking for a change in their life this month. Oh, uh, lift up your name. Lift up the name of Jesus. Isn't God wonderful? Isn't he great? Isn't he wonderful? Isn't he magnificent? Oh, bless his name. Bless his name. I don't, I don't care if anybody in your house is not a Christian. This is not about it. This is about lifting up the name of Jesus. This is about exalting his name. You don't have to be perfect to worship God. You just lift up his name. And realize that God has been magnificent towards you. Realize that his love towards you is great. Realize that he has been awesome. Just, just move. Just give yourself some a, a space of worship this morning. As we lift up the name of Jesus. I just need you for the next seconds. Where the next ten seconds as we go into his inner presence. I just want us to worship. And the reason why I'm saying worship is because... When you realize that you came through the predictions of all the what the governors and the presidents were saying, the amount of people who should have been dead. Oh, y'all not hearing me this morning. But the amount of our people who have underlying sicknesses. And he brought you through. Some of us still had to go through chemotherapy. Some of you still had to go get radiation done. Some of you still had to go to the doctor because of what was happening in your body. Some of you still had to go get dialysis done. Some of you still had to go to work because you're an essential worker. But I need somebody out there. I'm not even preaching yet. I need somebody out there to just get a little animated right now. Glorify, glorify, glorify. 
glorify him, glorify him, glorify him, glorify him, glorify him, glorify him. I'm just trying to get you in. I'm just trying to get you in. I'm just trying to get you in to the next phase of your life where God is going to be looking over you as if you are his precious beloved. Doesn't he love you? Don't you love him? Don't you love him? We want to transition right now in the next phase of this service. We thank you so much for being a weekly supporter of our services. In a moment, we're going to pray for the frontline workers and the essential workers all around. But I thank you so much. On behalf of myself and Bethel Tabernacle, thank you for your givings and for your support. And for those who are able to give this money, we want to encourage you and those who are, have been given by a partnership. Partnership simply means that you're given into this ministry because you see the work that we're doing. You can go to my page, which is Dave K. Allen page, and you can go to the Bethel Tabernacle AME page and you can see the work that we're doing every single week. You can see how we're giving back to the community. We are seeing, you're seeing how we're bringing these services to you. And we want to bring the top-notch service to you. But it costs. And we want to make sure that the people out there who need help, that we can reach those people. Amen? And so if God has blessed you and God is still blessing you with a paycheck and an employer, would you help us to give this morning? You can text. You can text the word give. You can text the word give to 716 226 5253. Right number again, you text the word give to 716 226 5253. You can go to www.bethelthabernacleame.org slash donate slash donate and you can see the multiple ways that you can give. It's cash App, PayPal, Givelify, and all those ways that you can give just to make sure but regardless of what you're able to give we appreciate it and i thank you so much god bless you father now let your gracious blessings come upon them bless them and even a person now god who is struggling with a job struggling to maintain struggling to find a job struggling with their employer Father, now, let the blessings of God be released on their lives. In Jesus' name. You are blessed. You are blessed. I need you to put that in the comment section right now. I am blessed. Now, when I look at it afterwards, I want to see those words. I am blessed. And if you live with a family of more than four, with now that you've received a stimulus check, and it's over 3,400, you can say, we are our hashtag, we are blessed. Amen. God has blessed you and God cares for you. And you will see those blessings in the next few weeks. Right now, right now, we want to take some time and pray. It's so critical. It's so critical. It's so critical. It's so critical that we pray for our essential workers. It's so critical that we pray for our nurses of every, every different nurses, every different doctor, emergency doctors, every doctor of every kind. But we want to especially pray for those who are right there in those rooms with the, the coronavirus patient. We, we want to pray for them. And here's why. Here's why we want to pray for them. Some of them are dealing with children that they have to go back home to. Some of them are going back to families that have elderly in their homes. And they not only do they have to work at the hospital, but they have to go back home and, and help those in their homes. Their parents out there who have to deal with going to work, coming back home to do day school. And yet there's some who are struggling with just to find a job. There's some who are struggling in the Department of Education. There's some who are struggling in supermarkets. And we want to make sure that God, God covers them. While you're home, 
with so many other people that are impacted in so many different ways. And we want to make sure that they're covered. That because of them, you are. Because of them. Somebody put that in the comment section right now. Thank you. Hashtag thank you. That because of them, you are. So let's pray. Would you pray with me as we go in the presence of the Lord right now? As we go into the presence of the Lord right now, I want you to pray with me. I want you to pray with me. Oh, come on, we can pray right now. I, I want you to get everybody in your house. I want you to get everybody in your house. I want you to say, we gotta pray, we gotta pray. We gotta pray, we gotta call down heaven in our home. We gotta call down heaven in the hospital. And if you have a loved one who is right there in the hospital right now and you know that they, they need desperate prayer, you can just put their names right there in the comment section. If you, if you know that it's not coronavirus someone else has, but it may be dementia, it may be cancer, it may be that they're dealing with some sort of other virus within their bodies. We are still dealing with the highness of the flu season right now. Not only the flu season, but it's allergy season. But we want to make sure that we pray for those. We don't want to forget them. We want to pray for those who are suffering from AIDS and HIV still. Besides the coronavirus, there's other sicknesses that we pray for. We want to pray for those who have suffered from serious, serious, serious um, mental disease. Um, those who are suffering from anxiety and depression. Those who are suffering from any type of things that you can think of. I want to pray. I want you to know I've been praying for you all week long. And right now, let's go into the presence of God. I, I take, I want to, I want to dear you right now to pray with me. I want to dear you right now to change the atmosphere of the way you live. To change the atmosphere. If you're renting a room, that's okay, but you can pray right in that room. If you live in a studio apartment, we want to pray for you. If you're living in one bedroom and more, we want to pray for you. Come on, let's pray. Would you pray with me? And so God, we come before you this morning. Thou God who is Adonai, thou God who is Jehovah Jireh, thou God who is omnipresent and omniscient, you are the God who sits high and looks below. You're the one who knows our needs. You're the one who sees our emotional shift all through the week. You're the one who understands our emotions, how they go high, how they go low, and how sometimes the distress of the week, the distress of the, the pandemic, the distress of the news, how it causes us to be shifted in ways that God, we feel as if we've lost our own mind. And it's, if it had not been for your goodness, if it had not been for your grace, we would not have come through the month of April, but because of your loving kindness towards us, and because of how good you have been towards us, and it's not because we have done anything, God, but we appeal to you of our own goodness, because our goodness is as filthy rags, and someone out there who needs your healing touch. I spoke to you this morning, Father, and I said I'll be praying for the cancer patient. I told you this morning, Father, I'll be praying for someone with dementia. I told you, Father, I'll be praying for someone who has a foot disease and a head disease. I told you, Father, I'll be praying for someone who has an ulcer in their stomach. I told you, Father, I'll be praying for those who are suffering from anxiety and depression. I told you, Father, that I'll be praying for churches and pastors. I told you, Father, I'll be praying for families who had a loved one who died and passed away during the month of April. But God, right now, it seems as if that the person just died today and they need your comfort, they need your touch. And Father, even now as I'm speaking, let the power of God exude right through me and touch every single person who's listening by the mighty power of God and God's touch will touch them and heal them. And you said call for the elders of the church and let the elders of the church as they pray they shall be healed. And God, you are not a man that you should lie. And God, even as your word, you said, you said, you said, you said, heaven and earth will pass. But your word will never pass and your word is your bond. And God, right now we bind whatever sickness, but it's affecting every single person who's listening right now, let them be healed. Let them feel the touch and the fire of God in their body. Let them feel it as if it's oil running down from their head all the way down to their 
feet just as it did for Aaron. When the oil moved from his head, from the crown of his head, all the way down to his feet. Lord, would you touch them and heal them? Lord, would you touch the elderly who's afraid right now? Lord, would you touch a mother? Lord, would you touch a father who's afraid? In the name of Jesus. God, we give you thanks that you're able to do all things. And we bless your name. As we lift up your name with somebody up there, raise your hand up to heaven. Say, Father, I stretch my hand to thee. No other help I know, but they wear my elderly right now who know these songs. And say, God, amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Give God thanks, for it is so. Give God thanks because it is done. Give God thanks because you're healed. Let me know, let me know, let put right there in the comment section. I am healed. I am delivered. I am whole. You are whole by the word of God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you for every nurse. Thank you for every doctor. Thank you for every supermarket worker. Thank you for every, every potato worker. Thank you, God, for every police officer. Thank you for every politician who's trying to help us. In Jesus' name, and it is so. In Jesus' name, and it is so. We give God praise and thanks. Oh, come on, open up your mouth and give him praise and thanks. Open up your mouth and say, God, I thank you. Open up your mouth. I just feel a fire on me this morning. And that's why I'm like this. This morning, I just feel God. Is there somebody out there who can say, God, thank you. Thank you for this service. Thank you that you're speaking to me this morning. Thank you for your love and your grace. I got a word for you this morning. I pray. I pray you'll get your pens. You'll get your, your papers. You'll get your notebooks. There is a word. Somebody out there put a word. There is a word this morning. We got a great word for you. We want to stay within the time that's given unto us, but there's a word you've got to I will make sure, make sure you got to share this video. Everybody who's listening, make sure you share it to your page. Everybody who has friends, share it to your friends. Don't, don't be afraid they might think otherwise of you. You got to share it. Every young person who's listening, you got to share it. You got to share it. You got to share it. I want to see the shares going over and over. I want to see this video on every single page. If I search afterwards, I'm going to call you and let you know you got to share it. You got to share it. You got to make sure there's so much people this morning who needs a word of encouragement, who needs healing, who just needs somebody to know that they're praying for them. Would you be that person who stands in the gap, who stands in the gap between heaven and between that person and let them know that someone is praying for them. Let them know that there's a word from God for them. We're going to be coming from, we're going to be coming from the gospel, the gospel, the gospel of Mark, M-A-R-K, the gospel of Mark. And I want you to go to Mark chapter 4, Mark chapter 4, and we're going to be reading from verse 35 to 41. That's Mark chapter 4, verse 35 to 41. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your word. And for this moment as we go into this sacred moment where your word is like a double-edged sword, where your word will speak to somebody, where your word will speak to thousands, where your word will be healing, where your word will stop the approach of the enemy, where your word with someone who desperately needs it this morning and this week. Let the word wrap around them like the sheet of heaven. Let it be in their mouths. But let it heal that which is bitter in their stomach. So thank you as we go through this word. In the name of Jesus, we pray. In the name of, come on, somebody out there. Just worship him. Say, God, this is what I want you to just say right now in the comment section. You've got to do it. You've got to do it. You've got to. obedience. Obedience will lead to your healing. Faith coming by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. But what is faith without works? 
And here's the works that it speaks about. That's why I'm telling you, you got to share the video. Share this live broadcast. Share it. Share it. You don't know which one of your friends are going for. You don't know this week we've heard of so many. This week it was over what if a total of over 1,200 people died. And you've got to give God thanks that you broke one of them if you're watching this morning. And that's why I want to tell you, please, please, I appeal to you, be a blessing to somebody. Be a blessing to somebody who needs it. Encourage them. Don't be ashamed to share it. Don't be ashamed to share For those of you who will be watching on YouTube afterwards, I want you to go and subscribe to the page. But I also want you to like the page and also share. You can also share it from YouTube. For those of you who are watching on any other social media, Instagram, on the Dave K. Allen page, you've got to share it. You've got to share it. For those of you who are watching from the Bethel Tabernacle page, please don't keep this word to yourself. Please don't keep this word to yourself. This is one of the critical scriptures of the Bible, and it speaks to life. It speaks to fear. It speaks to anxiety. But it speaks to the crises that each one of us are facing. Here's the word as we read it. Mark chapter 4, from verse 35 to 41. That day, when evening came, he said to his disciples, Let us go over to the other side. But leaving the crowd behind, they took him along. Just as he was in the boat, there were also other boats with him. And right verse 37 says, a furious squall came up and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swam. I want you to see the image of that. The waves, it says, a, a, the waves broke over the boat and came in to the boat and almost capsized them. And so Jesus was in the stern, that means Jesus was in the bottom of the boat, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him up and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? Can I put that in contemporary terms again for you? Teacher, don't you care if my family member in the hospital is about to die. Teacher, don't you care if I've lost my job? Teacher, don't you care if my wife died, my husband died, my children died? Teacher. And then Jesus, he got up and he rebuked the wind and said to the waves, quiet, be still. But the wind died down and was completely calm. He said to his disciples, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? And they were terrified and asked each other, who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. I want to use for uh, a sermon topic this morning, um, enough with the excuses, make a move. Enough with the excuses. Make a move. Somebody put that in the hashtag section, in the comment section. Enough with the excuses. Make a move. Uh, the history has shown us that as long as we are living upon this earth, that disaster, crisis, pandemic is going to happen. A few years ago, you'll remember, right there in Haiti, when Haiti had that horrible earthquake. You'll remember, right there in a part of Asia, the continent of Asia, they had this great tsunami. You'll remember that even Iran and across the world, there were great earthquakes, there were great hurricanes in the Caribbean. A few years ago, there were the hurricanes that actually wiped out several countries. A few couple of years ago, or maybe a year ago, we saw how a hurricane almost wiped out the Hawaiian Islands, almost wiped out the Bahamas. We see these 
pandemics, these crises over and over again. But what I want to bring to you, and my first thing that I want you to hashtag is, crisis allows us to be prepared. Crisis helps us, storms comes for us to be prepared. What do you mean by that? Uh, if, you, if you go back over 100 years ago, we go back to Chicago, there was a fire that happened in Chicago. And the fire killed 300 people, killed them. But it also, watch this, it also caused over 100,000 people to become homeless. However, what that fire, great fire did, it caused the fire department, uh, not only in Chicago, but across the world, to ramp up on what it is to prepare for the next fire or the great fire that will come. It, it helps them to put in place measures and protections that gives alerts so that they can be prepared for when the next disaster is coming. I want, let me say this to you, the no two disasters are alike. No two sicknesses are alike. How I may face a sickness is not how you may cope with it. One person, as we saw with this coronavirus, one person may die and the other person just ease through it. But viruses comes and pandemics comes because it helps us to be prepared for the next time it comes. That's why we've got places and emergencies in place that's called disaster preparedness. They don't know exactly how it's going to affect them, but what they do know is that they can be better prepared for when it comes. You're not hearing me out there. Next time you go through some trouble, I want you to say, I saw what this trouble looked like in my past. I know I'm better prepared right now. Some of us, we had relationships. Some of us had marriages that failed. I do to the next time you get into another one. You know just exactly what you ought to look for. That person fooled you the last time. But now you can say once bitten, twice shy. But you ain't gonna fool me the first and the second time again. And therefore you put measures in place. Am I talking to somebody out there that says next time I go through an emergency, I'll be better prepared for what's come through coming at me. I, I pray a prayer with my family. And the prayer goes like this, Lord, help us to see the danger afar in the distance that we may be better prepared for when it comes. The Bible never said that trouble is not going to come at all. It says trouble will come. But I need somebody out there who can go in the comment section right now and says even if trouble comes, I got a God who is ready for me. I got a God who is on my side. You got to know that God is with you. I gotta go to the second one. The next time you know that you go through some troubles in your life, I need you to know. I need you to know. The first one is be prepared. That's the scout's model. The second one is it's not a problem to restart. There is no problem in restarting. What do you mean, Pastor? Here's what I mean by that. Y'all remember when God created the heavens and the earth? Y'all remember that, right? When God created heavens and earth, he put man in the garden. And next thing you know, man, the, here comes, here comes something that was not supposed to be in that movie. It's called Satan. It's called the devil. And the devil deceived man. And because of that, the heart of man became evil. Y'all know what I'm talking about. And next thing you know, God says, I regret, but I made man. Look at this. And God got no one put him in the ark. Y'all know what I'm talking about. And the world became flooded. And God had to do what? Restart. I don't know what you're going through out there, but restarting does not mean it's the end of your life. I'm talking to somebody out there. You ought to look at your life and picture it as if it's just one scene, just one scene, and say, I'm not looking at the full movie of my life. This the coronavirus, this COVID-19, it's only one scene, one scene, one scene. It's not the end of my life. I know I'm crying. I know I've lost my job, but I can restart. And as long as I have life, if God did it, I can restart too. Is there anybody out there that restarting does not mean it's the end of your life? Get up and start again. Get up and press the reset button. Get up and say, as long as I can breathe, 
free. I'm gonna go again. I gotta get out of here. But before I go, I see the disciples in the boat. And here's the disciples, the wind, the wind, the wind. I want to let you know, but this is probably not the first time, but they went through a storm. And but here, just imagine all of them is in the boat. And one screaming at everybody. Let me tell you, storms will cause you to get in a panic. Storms will cause you to be nervous. Storms will cause you to make you feel like you're losing your mind. Wondering how you're going to make it. But watch this. I can just imagine. Peter screaming at John. John, can't you see the water coming in? John screaming at Andrew. Andrew, what are you doing over there? And everybody screaming at everybody. And the water is coming in the boat. But you got to get over the excuses. It's not what everybody is doing. It's now is not the time to be pointing fingers. Now is the time that says get over the excuses. It's time to bust the move. Get around people who can bust the move with God. Get around people who can say, I ah, we will get through this. Remember Obama? Yes, we can. We will get through this. Yes, we can. We will get through this. Yes, we can. We will get over this mountain. Yes, we can. We will come through this Christmases. Yes, we can. You've got to learn to get over this mountain. Enough with the excuses. You've got to learn to bust the move. You've got to learn to say, as long as God is with me, come hell or high water, I'm not going to give up. Come hell or high water, I will get out of my debt. Come hell or high water, I will make it through. Come hell or high water, I'm going to get through this. Because here's where God was. He was right there. Can I give you something before I get you? Watch this. Here's what. I'm going to leave you with something right now. It just imagine. But God made the world in six days. And on the seventh day, he rested. Here's why. Let me give it to you. When I was a little boy, my mother used to have to leave me in the house by myself. And she would go to work. And while she's at work, she would say, Dave, if you need clothes, it's on the bedroom. If you need cheese, it's in the refrigerator. If you need this, this is where it is. Watch this. God made the world in six days. Everything you need on Monday, it's already in place. Everything you need on Tuesday, it's already in place. Everything you need on Wednesday, it's already in place. Say with me, everything you need on Thursday, it's already in place. Everything you need on Friday, it's already in place. Everything you need on the rest day. But here's what God is saying. God is saying, I got you. You don't have to be afraid. I got you. Don't be afraid. If I speak to the wind, if I speak to your problems in the past, just imagine what I'll do for you. Going forward, your future is greater than your present. You're only in a sea. You gotta get up. You gotta get up. Get up out of your mess. Get up out of the basement of pity. Get up out of that anxiety. Get up out of that loneliness. Get up and think that the world has just given you the worst feeling of your life. You gotta say, if God did it for the disciples when the water was coming at them, God can do it for me. You need to say to the person next to you, enough with the excuses. It's time to put the move. Enough with trying to say one day, enough, and just bust that move. And then 25 people out here, they saying to themselves, it's time to bust the move. We give God praise. Enough with the excuses. Make a move. You've got to make a move. But when you make the move, you will see God speaks to the winds, 
to the storm. And the greatest thing about this particular passage, they said the question was asked, who is this man that even the winds, <laughs> but even the storm? God will speak to things and, and, and give you a new perspective on the things that you thought he couldn't do. Why do you think they went to Jesus? Because they knew he would make the difference in their lives. I know somebody out there was listening to this message this morning. You've been making excuses all your life. Some of you stopped going to church. Some of you decided that church wasn't for me. Some of you decided that, you know, God, this God thing, this God thinking is not for me. But I want you to know this message, you heard it, you stayed along listening. Because God knew. It's called providence. God knew that you had to listen. God knew that you needed a word. Listen here, let me give you the points again. Storms help you to prepare. Storms help you to restart. And storms will help you to push you forward. A push you forward is that making that move. Make that move. Stop procrastinating on this part of the movie of your life. Yes, God is the author and the finisher of your faith, but God gave you the director part. God gave you the director part. What does the director do? He writes the scenes, and God is the producer. In other words, God does what? He crops, he edits, and he, he puts in place. He crops, he edits, and he restates. He crops, he edits, and he said, no, delete that scene. He crops, he edits, and he watches it, and he steps in. God has not left you. This is for somebody who needs to just make that change, make that move in your life. Enough with the excuses. Enough with living in that place that is not working out for you. Enough with the excuses. It's time to make that move. Here's the first move you can make. You admit that the Lord Jesus Christ is Lord and the only person who can make a difference in your life and speak to the storms of your life. Young people, what will, what will the weed do for you during the COVID if you're on a hospital bed? Young people, what will the club do if you're on that hospital bed crying out for your life? And not only the young people, elderly, mature adults, what is it doing for you? This one is, if you need the Lord Jesus Christ, we got to move. Just say, Lord Jesus Christ. I heard the word this morning. I'm, I'm over my excuses. I'm over it. I'm over it. This coronavirus has got me thinking with clarity. This coronavirus just gave me a new perspective on who you are. And Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Save me. Sanctify my heart. I believe you died. I believe you live next to God on the throne, making intercessions for you. Come into my heart, see. If you pray that prayer, you are saved. For those of you who don't have a church home, I want you to do this. I want you to go online, right? To, to, right? You're already online, but I want you to make note of this, of this email. Bethel. Bethel tab. B-E-T-H-E-L T-A-B 90 at gmail.com BethelTab90 at gmail.com I want you to send us an email and let us know how we can be of help to you if you're in search of a church home. We'll send you some materials you'll get it directly from me. We'll send you things that can help you through this walk because God is with you. For those of you who have left the church, God is welcoming you back and saying, enough with the excuses. Enough. Come back. Enough. Father, we thank you for this message. Speak to the people that's out there who's listening. Let the word of God permeate their hearts and minds. Speak to them now. Speak to every young person. Speak to every elderly. Speak to every pastor, every minister who's watching this. And do them now with the word. Convict them by the spirit of God. I let your word 
manifest in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to go through the time of communion right now. This is a sacrament of the church that we will continue through these first Sundays. And we ask that you get a bread and crackers and juice, grape juice and whatever your preference is. And just go through this moment, this moment as we, we consecrate it this month unto God. Every leader out there, would you pray with us? But you don't have to be an AME. You don't have to be Pentecostal. You don't have to be Baptist to do this. The sacrament is about doing this in memory, in memory of him. You will hear me pray a prayer that says general confession. It's a prayer that we do to start this. And then I'm going to go in and consecrate, consecrate the bread, consecrate this juice. I pray you will pray with me. I pray you will pray with me. Please get the sacrament. Parents, you have a responsibility to do this with every child in your house. Don't do it by yourself, please. Don't do it by yourself. Don't turn to God in the time of disaster alone. Communion is about fellowship. Communion is about the sacrament. Would you pray with me? If you have a loved one in your house who is sick, just pass it to them, please. Would you do that with us? The prayer I'm going to pray next is what is known as the general confession. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things and judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against your divine majesty, provoking most justly your wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please you in newness of life to the honor and glory of your name through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, worthily magnify your holy name to Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We do not presume to come to this, your table, O oh, merciful Lord, trusting in my own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. I am not worthy so much as to gather the crumbs on your table, but you are the Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, but even of my sins and the sins of all those who are listening, their souls and bodies may be made clean by his death, and wash through his blood, and that we may ever more dwell in him and he in us. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of your tender mercy did give your only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death on the cross for our redemption, who may thereby his oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world and did institute in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again hear us O merciful father we most humbly beseech you and grant that we receive in these your creatures of bread and wine according to your son our savior jesus christ holy institution in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed, he took the bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, 
And when he broke it, he gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat this. It's my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me.
before him and to present you faultless before his throne. To the only wise God be our glory, dominion, honor, and power. And God is with you. Enough with the excuses. Make that move. And because of that, we say amen and amen. God bless you.